at six, the search for a cop killer. A Phoenix police officer killed in a hit and run. His death on the same day a Phoenix firefighter loses his life in the line of duty. And we have team coverage of these developing stories. It's six o'clock. We're gearing up for another dramatic day in the Jody Arias case. What Arias might say when she addresses the jury later today. Then there's this. Everything was just, um, it was just gone. I mean, you see like beds in the yard. You see everything was just like you took the house, you put it in a gigantic blender, you turned it on pulse for a couple minutes, mm -hmm. and then you just dumped it out. We are adding up the damage caused by a string of tornadoes across the Midwest. And who would you rather sit next to on a plane, a crying baby or an adult who smells? Believe it or not, there's a new survey out that's coming up a little bit later. But first, we do want to go to April at oh. Weather Center where she's, I know, she's tracking some I know, hotter than normal temperatures. As long as we're not in the hundreds, I'm a happy woman. Yeah, you know what? Then you're going to be a happy woman, at least for a couple <laughs> of days around here, because we're talking about above average, but no triple digits and we're not breaking any records. So in the month of May, we'll take it. How about some temperatures as you head out the door for the start of this new week? We've got 67 at Glendale, 69 at Scottsdale, and 70 at Tempe. 68 right now at Gilbert and 65 in Chandler, 64 at Buckeye, and 69 for Surprise. Your out-the-door forecast, 74 by 6 o'clock. Uh, 76 by 7 o'clock and 78 by 8 o'clock. We're going to stay in the 70s, folks, throughout the morning hours, at least the next couple of hours. Probably not going to warm up to the 80s until the 9, 10 o'clock hours. So you've got plenty of time to uh, get out and get that morning walk or jog in. Maybe mm -hmm. even a hike still that time of year uh, where you can get out and do that for a couple hours in the morning. In the meantime, Gina is tracking your Monday morning commute, some problems on the east side. Yeah, in fact, uh, both the 202 freeways affected by the problems that we are watching out there. Uh, we were tracking some breaking news for you on the 202 Red Mountain Freeway. Let's go ahead and go to the maps. It was on the eastbound side of McClintock, and actually the scene is still there. It is indeed still blocking the HOV and the left lanes, but uh, traffic very light in the area, so that's the good news from a traffic standpoint. Nonetheless, watch out for the crews that are on the scene there. And then the 202 Santan Freeway, the eastbound side, so that's the outbound side at McQueen. We've got a report of some dead animals in the roadway, so I'll watch out if you're getting ready to head out in this area. May 19th, 2013 will go down in history in the city of Phoenix. In many ways, it's a tragic day uh, in our city. We lost two of our finest. A somber start to the week for the city of Phoenix after a firefighter and police officer both die in a span of hours. Yeah, the officer was killed by a hit and run driver. And while police remember the memory of officer Daryl Rates, they continue to look for his killer. Ryan O'Donnell is live now with the latest. Ryan, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Scott. That's right. That driver is still out there. Now they found the SUV that killed Officer Rates there. And when they, they found that SUV, they actually found somebody driving it inside. At this time, though, they're not sure if that is the person that actually hit and killed Officer Rates. They're still talking to him and trying to figure that out. Now, in the meantime here, right behind me, they're setting up a, a memorial here that continues to grow throughout the morning here. Now, in the six years as a Phoenix police officer, Daryl Rates worked at both the S Australia and Maryville precinct. Now before that, he served in the military with tours in Iraq. He leaves behind a wife and a daughter who's about to graduate kindergarten. Rach was hit by that SUV at around 3.30 Sunday morning. He and his partner, they're making a DUI stop. Rach get, got out of the vehicle there, and at some point, that's when the driver of that dark green SUV hit him and then took off. Well, hours later, that green Ford SUV found by surprise police. But again, as I mentioned, that driver still out and about. Just a short time ago, we talked to one of Officer Rach's colleagues from the Maryville Precinct. Uh, a yes sir, no sir, hardworking, uh, battle hardened, um, you know, just a stoic, humble, dry sense of humor guy, you know, just, you know, it, an ideal recruit in my opinion. <laughs> Now, as for that driver that's still out there, if you happen to know any information about that, you are urged to call Phoenix Police, or if you'd like to stay anonymous, you can call 480-WITNESS. Back to you guys. Ryan, thank you. Just hours before Officer Rates died, Phoenix firefighter Brad Harper died at the same hospital after being pinned between two fire vehicles. And this morning, friends, family, and colleagues are remembering him. Javier Soto is live with more. Javier, this is just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking straight across the board. He was a firefighter. He was a son, a brother, and had recently become a husband. But this morning, outside a Phoenix 
Fire Station 21, where Bradley Harper used to work. Well, flags are at half staff and a memorial continues to grow in honor of the young firefighter who was killed in the line of duty. We want to show you a picture of this hero. Again, a young 23 year old who had been with the Phoenix Fire Department for the last two years. Friends described him as a fitness fanatic, but being soft when it came to his new wife, whom he had just married in December. But tragedy struck Saturday when, while working a mulch fire, Harper was pinned between two emergency vehicles while carrying equipment. He was rushed to St. Joseph's Hospital, where early yesterday morning he died from his injuries. Phoenix police are investigating that accident and have not released too many details. But Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton explained first arriving to the hospital to support his family. There was his family, a beautiful uh, family, uh, his wife, uh, his in-laws, his parents, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, it's an extended family, and so his co-workers uh, were there, his fellow firefighters, and uh, that is a family in and of itself, and so they were an incredible uh, morning. And again, outside Phoenix Fire Station 21, flags remain at half staff. Earlier this morning, we saw a man walk up, uh, place a candle at the base of this flagpole, light it, and then just jump on his my motorcycle and take off. Uh, there is a prayer vigil being held at Northwest Christian this morning at 730. That's where Bradley once went to school, and we're told that that's where his two younger brothers still go to school. Guys, back to you. Well, new this morning, a deadly crash on the I-10 overnight. This one near 59th Avenue. One person was killed in this crash, though it's not known exactly how it all happened. The area was closed off for several hours. And check out this semi, all banged up in the front. That's one of two involved in the three-vehicle crash. This was also on the I-10, and it also happened overnight near Riggs. Another semi ended up on its side. DPS does not know it led to this crash. No one was seriously hurt. That's the good news. Also new this morning, MCSO asking for your help to find a missing man. Come over to your TV, take a look at your screen. This is 76-year-old Max Wyatt. He was last seen in the Cave Creek area over the weekend. Phone records show someone did use his phone to make a call from Carlsbad, California. Wyatt drives a dark colored Mazda Miata. Please call MCSO if you have any information on his whereabouts. Phoenix police face a tough deadline after another popular gun buyback event. They've been holding these events for the past few weekends and have collected nearly 2,000 weapons in all. But a new law that would ban them from destroying the guns will soon go into effect. It's set to take effect 90 days after the legislative session ends, which could be any day now. Police are working hard to process all the guns collected. Those that are not processed before the deadline will have to be resold. And Arizona set up for what should be an interesting debate in the state house this week. Senators passed Governor Brewer's Medicaid expansion bill last week in a vote by of 19 to 11. And there is concern by supporters that there could be some major roadblocks on that side of the Capitol. That includes opposition from some conservatives who aren't happy about the governor supporting part of President Obama's health care reform plan. Well, tomorrow, the city of Bisbee will once again take on the issue of civil union rights for same-sex couples. The city council will consider a revised version of the civil union ordinance it passed last month. The council agreed to rewrite the, ordin the ordinance after Attorney General Tom Horn threatened to sue over passages that he said were in conflict with state law. Well, if passed, Bisbee would be the first Arizona city to grant civil unions. Well, not long after her verdict was read, Jody Arias said she would prefer death over life as her punishment. So what will she say when she talks to jurors today? We got a closer look at that later this hour. And do you happen to be looking for work? You're going to hear about a couple of job fairs happening in the Valley this week, including one today. And are you planning a trip to the beach soon? Yes. You want to stay tuned because we got a new warning out about sunscreen products. Monday means the start of a warm up. I'll show you what I'm tracking for this new week ahead coming up. And here's a live look outside. Piestua Peak. It's going to be a beautiful day as you wake up this morning. We'll be right back at 610.
At 613, we are watching your Monday morning commute, a live look here at the Loop 101 and I-17 in North Phoenix. We actually call that transition the North Stack. I do want to mention we had a big weekend construction closure uh, on the 101, the eastbound side, because they were laying down rubberized asphalt. You can see the freeways open again. From 35th Avenue over to 7th Avenue, you should have a nice, quiet, smooth ride because of that rubberized asphalt. Let me take you to the west side. We've got a couple of problems here we want to warn you about. I-10 eastbound at 75th Avenue, that accident, it's right there at the bottom of the on-ramp at 75th Avenue, but you can still get on the freeway there. Really, though, you can see the slowing continues past that point over to 51st Avenue. And then we have a car fire, Buckeye, and 83rd Avenue. That's a check of your traffic. April, I have to tell you, last mm -hmm. night we were at the park. Yes. And the breeze made it yeah. so so beautiful to be out there. <laughs> it was packed, I should say. Yeah, you know what? A, a lot lately, it just has not felt like May around here, yeah. particularly during those nights and mornings. You got a couple extra hours maybe to get out at the park during the evening hours. And if you like that breeze, uh, you're going to like today's forecast. We've got more wind coming away. If you've got allergies, you're probably not one of those people who does like the wind. Uh, it's not going to be terribly windy today. We're talking about winds out of the west this afternoon uh, at, at maybe 10 to 20 miles an hour, maybe some gusts up to 30 miles an hour, probably picking up right around midday. And by that time, we're going to see sunshine and uh, temperature for about 90 in Scottsdale, midday in Glendale, clear skies in 91. Tempe, 89, again, becoming breezy right around midday today and lasting into the afternoon hours. And a warm day by uh, lunchtime today, it'll already be 91 degrees for Field Park across the state this morning. Tucson's waking up to 65. It's 59 in Globe and 70 for Yuma. Flagstaff this morning has been right around freezing. Looks like they're just a couple degrees above right now at 34. It's 57 to start your day at Sedona and 50 at Prescott. Well, across the West, all is calm for now. What we're going to see though later today is a cold front dropping through the state. It's a dry cold front, so it's not really showing up much here on satellite and radar, but it's connected to this whole area of low pressure, this big storm system that continues to push east today. It's going to cause some problems again likely in spots like Oklahoma and Kansas hit hard by tornadoes yesterday. But really, this is just one of the ingredients here adding to fuel that severe weather outbreak that continues today likely in the Plains states across the West. After that front moves through, there is high pressure off to our West and what that's going to bring as it sinks south and moves into our area it is a warm up. Basically, temperatures are going to peak right around Wednesday in the triple digits. Uh, but for the next couple of days, we're going to see the sunshine today and the wind not much moisture. In fact, here's what future cast is showing by one o'clock this afternoon, maybe a sprinkle or two in far north or northeastern Arizona. As we go through the rest of the day today, we see clear skies across the state. Same during those overnight hours. As we get into tomorrow, we're going to call for mostly sunny skies. I think that's what we'll see most of the day, but we do see some clouds beginning to move in from the west uh, again. Things stay very dry around here. There's just no rain in sight as we get into Wednesday. Clear skies again. Lots of sunshine. And Wednesday again is that day we're forecasting the triple digits. For today, about 96. The high for Surprise, Buckeye, and Goodyear. How about 97 in Peoria and Litchfield Park? Sunshine and breezy conditions by 4 o'clock this afternoon uh, in Central Phoenix. 96, your high today in downtown and Ahwatukee. 96 in Avondale and 94 uh, this afternoon for Scottsdale. 95 for Glendale. Further into the East Valley, you're going to warm it up to about 97 today in Gilbert and Chandler. Your high 96 for Tempe and Mesa and 95 this afternoon in Queen Creek. Get your head out there for the Peach Festival. I hear they had a great turnout over the weekend. 97 for today. We climb to 99 tomorrow. 101 and breezy again for Wednesday. <laughs> We uh, are following some breaking news on the west side of town. You know, we had this listed as a car fire. We never know how severe they are. But my goodness, take a look at what firefighters are dealing with out there. It looks like the front end of a, a semi there and the cab completely engulfed. In fact, almost uh, decimated there by the flames. This is again on the west side of town. 83rd Avenue and uh, Lower Buckeye is where they are fighting this fire. It looks like the, the front end of that semi is detached attached from the trailer, but uh, still tremendous smoke in the area. If you're driving in maybe on the I-10, you might see some of the smoke if you're getting ready to head out real quickly here. Once again, this is 83rd Avenue and Lower Buckeye. Wow, what a mess, Gina. Thank you for that. Well, ouch. Yes, it hurts. The pain at the pump continues to get worse across the country. The national average has gone up 11 cents over the past two weeks. It's now up to 366 for a gallon of regular unleaded. That's according to the Lundberg survey. Prices are lower here in Arizona. The state average is 344 a gallon and folks in Tucson are 
paying at least paying the least, excuse me, for gas in the U.S. Their average is 318. Minneapolis, Minnesota has the highest average. Can you guess? Four dollars and twenty-seven cents. 618 right now in today's Money Matters. You may be shocked to hear what type of health insurance coverage some employers are considering offering. Jane King is at the New York Stock Exchange with that, and Yahoo making a very unusual announcement this morning. An announcement that involves a lot of dough. Good morning. Uh, they are a billion dollar bet actually yet yeah, out here this morning from Yahoo it's buying the blogging network Tumblr 1.1 billion dollars now in the press release that did announce the deal Yahoo promises quote not to screw it up it says in an effort uh, that uh, Tumblr uh, will be headquartered in New York. It will continue to host its blogs. They're going to keep management in place so they don't mess up the very popular website, especially among uh, young people. 26-year-old David Karp will remain in charge of Tumblr. All this as CEO Marissa Meyer continues to try to remake Yahoo into a company that will attract more users and advertisers. This is Yahoo's biggest buyout to date, by the way. Now, if you thought the new health care law would mean you'd be getting good health coverage, well, get ready for a big surprise. Wall Street Journal says some insurance companies are pitching plans that don't provide benefits for things like hospital stays, x-rays, or prenatal care. They're just bare bones coverage. Uh, they're designed to meet the needs of companies who are required to provide coverage under the Affordable Health Care Act. And speaking of health, be careful at the beach. If Even if you are slathering on the sunscreen, the Environmental Working Group says in spite of new rules about what claims that sunscreen makers can make, one in seven products currently on the market claim sun protection that is above 50 SPF. Well, some dermatologists say that's actually a gimmick, according to AP, because sunscreen that's 100 SPF isn't twice as effective as one that's 50. And any sunscreen needs to be reapplied every few hours. Now, as for trading, another record high for the Dow and the NASDAQ Friday. Futures this morning kind of flat at the moment. And a new business catering to those who want to try to make their own wine, Vintner Circle at 2765 Scottsdale Road. Now, offering people the chance to make their own wine. You can choose one of more than 50 fermented juices available, and then you can see it through different steps in the entire process. They charge between $280 and $450 for this. And for the price, you get according to Biz Journals, 28 bottles of wine, and you can create the labels for it as well. You can also make beer for under 200 bucks for up to 60 bottles of beer. And by the way, the owner of the franchise looking for other entrepreneurs who want to open up their own franchises. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Jane King, Bloomberg News, reporting for 3TV. That's yeah, cool. You. Making your own wine and beer. I love it, Jane. Thank yeah. you. As long as it tasted okay. Seriously, thank you <laughs> very much. Sure that, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> thank you. Coming up next, the next set of obstacles for an immigration reform bill being looked at in Washington. And you've heard of bomb sniffing dogs, but how about this? Bomb sniffing bees. How these guys can help spot bombs. Commuters in New England having a tough time getting to work this morning after the train service and the very busy New York to New Haven corridor could be shut down for days after Friday's rush hour train crash. Investigators haven't said exactly what caused it, but they are zeroing in on a rail fracture. The incident put more than 80 people in the hospital. The New York police officer who killed a college student during a home invasion over the weekend says he was left to make a split second decision. An ex convict broke into the home of 21 year old Andrea Robello and had her in a headlock when he started firing at officers. Nassau County police say the officer started shooting back and that's when Robello was hit by one of the eight shots fired. The suspect was also killed. The officer is on sick leave while authorities investigate. At a massive fire at a condo complex in Dallas this morning leaves more than 20 units destroyed. Fortunately, no one was hurt when the six alarm fire sent huge flames shooting through this three story building. In Washington, the Senate Judiciary Committee aiming to wrap up work this week on the immigration bill, but a few things have to get settled first, like whether gay Americans can give their partners green cards. The bipartisan bill aims to secure the border and help give citizenship to millions. But the outcome could be uncertain once it hits the Senate floor. Well, we've all heard about trained dogs and even rats to stiff out explosives like landmines. But now researchers in Croatia are training just your regular old honeybees to sniff out bombs. That's amazing. The group of scientists say the bees were conditioned to search for the scent of TNT and that the bees can detect buried landmines more than three miles away. 
Coming up, a closer look at the outpouring of support Phoenix Police and Phoenix Fire are receiving after two of their members die over the weekend. And what Jody Arias may say and show jurors when she addresses them in court later this morning. Well, Scotty, let me show you the congestion on the west side of town. I-10 at 83rd Avenue. We're going to talk about the problems causing this backup. And we are seeing our coolest temperatures of the morning right now. I'm going to show those to you what you can expect when you head out the door this morning and later today. Everybody, everybody, let's get into it. Get stoned, get it started, get it started, get it started. Let's get it started. Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started. Welcome back to Good Morning Arizona 629. We're getting started for you on this Monday morning. 73 degrees, winds light out of the southwest, six miles an hour with humidity at 29%. Now those wind speeds, I think, are going to pick up a little later today, switching to the out of a westerly uh, direction. Uh, maybe even some gusts up to 30 miles an hour. We're looking at a breezy afternoon and a high temperature today of 97 degrees. Yeah, the rest of your full forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. We do have some triple digits in there, so. Ooh. Yeah, one day's not bad, though. Yeah, we'll see. We can it. do that. <laughs> We're not whiners Thanks, over here. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Yeah, I was like, yes, we are. <laughs> Check us next week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I needed to take you to the west side. I got to warn you about some problems that we're looking at on the I-10 eastbound side here at the base of the on-ramp at 75th Avenue. We've got a crash. It's tough to see all the vehicles because they are behind the trees, but you you can see uh, one of the lanes on the on ramp partially blocked and look at the congestion leading up to that point. Let's go ahead and go to the maps. Let me put it on a map because sometimes it's just easier to tell exactly where it is. Once again, I-10 eastbound at 75th Avenue and you can see the backups now on the I-10. They start back at about 91st Avenue. Once you get past that accident scene, you're good to go. All right, jurors are likely going to hear from Jody Arias once again today as they decide whether she should live or die. Her defense team says that she will not be talking about murdering Travis Alexander. Instead, she's expected to talk about who she is. There are even plans for her to show jurors her artwork, which she's been selling on a website. You can watch it all play out live on our website, azfamily.com. Also in court, three young men accused of starting an all-out brawl at an ASU fraternity set to enter pleas this morning. Caleb and Isaiah Everett and Zachary Renzendez are set to answer to charges of disorderly conduct and discharging a firearm. Their arraignment is set for 8.30 this morning. The brawl happened last month at an apartment complex in Tempe at a Delta Kappa Epsilon frat party. Five people actually had to go to the hospital after being beaten with baseball bats. Investigators say the fight started over a girl. Also a court date for Cardinals linebacker Darrell Washington in his assault case involving the mother of his child. Washington accused of breaking the woman's collarbone during an altercation in Ahwatukee, just a couple of miles from the Cards training complex. Washington faces two counts of aggravated assault and one count of trespassing. His arraignment is set for 830. A major manhunt is still underway for the driver who hit and killed a Phoenix police officer over the weekend and then cowardly just drove away. Ryan O'Donnell's live at 51st Avenue in Thomas where it all happened. Ryan, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Scott. You're absolutely right here. In fact, where I'm standing, this is where the officer was hit and killed here. And as you can see behind me, a memorial continues to grow here this morning. Now, along with all the flowers and the balloons and all the candles here, I want to show you something that's very cool. Throughout the entire morning, different officers have been showing up here and stationing themselves here, not just to protect the, the memorial, but also to honor Officer Daryl Rates. Now, in the six years he has been with the Phoenix Police, Daryl Rates has worked at both the Australia and Maryville precinct. Now, before that, he served in the military and served tours in Iraq. Now, he leaves behind a wife and a daughter, and we're finding out this morning his daughter was going to graduate kindergarten this year. Now, Rates was hit by that SUV at around 3.30 Sunday morning, he and his partner, they were making a DUI stop. Rates got out of the police vehicle, which is very common when you have that kind of a stop. And at some point, that's when that dark green SUV, the driver there, hit him and then took off. Well, hours later, after a huge manhunt was starting, 
and word of that SUV got out. Surprise police saw a vehicle matching that description and pulled it over there and arrested somebody inside. Now at this point though, we're not sure if the person that was arrested is the actual driver who hit officer and killed officer Daryl Rates. We're still waiting on that. So in the meantime there, Phoenix police, they still want everybody out there to keep an eye out or if they know somebody uh, knows whoever is involved in this, certainly call Silent Witness. You can stay anonymous, 480 Witness, or Phoenix Police. Scott? Thank you for that. And of course, there's been an outpouring of emotion for both Phoenix Police and Phoenix Fire after Officer Rates and then Firefighter Brad Harper died within hours of each other. A lot of that emotion came in social media and yet it is in the newsroom with that part of the story. Hey, Scotty, yeah, I'm just going to show you some of the, all of the tweets that have been coming in, uh, both Phoenix and uh, Phoenix Fire and Phoenix Police have received all these tweets and Facebook posts even for people showing their support and offering prayers and condolences. That includes folks from both in and out of law enforcement. We're going to show you a tweet that was sent to them by Sheriff Joe Arpaio. It says, my thoughts and prayers go to the families of the Phoenix firemen and the Phoenix police officer who lost their lives in the line of duty. Even DBAC's president Derek Hall sent out this tweet. The D-backs are deeply saddened by the loss of two first responders, first responders from fire and police in two separate incidents. We have heavy hearts. Meanwhile, Governor Jan Brewer, she actually issued a statement. Here's part of it. It says, no words of mine can ease sorrow this deep for the family and friends of these two men. Men Hold high their memory and honor the service and sacrifice of those who risk their lives daily on behalf of ours. Mayor Greg Stanton says there's a fundraiser in the works to help families of both Officer Rates and Firefighter Harper. Once the details on that fundraiser are released, we will, of course, bring them to you. Three people in police custody, two at the hospital after a gunfight at a high school graduation party. Police say about 40 teenagers were at the party early Sunday morning when a gunfight broke out outside the house. It started with an argument between two different groups and turned into gunfire. Police say two adults that were hurt are expected to be okay. The three suspects arrested are facing several charges. I, you know, J.D., in 20 years, I've never said this, yeah. but I think it's our time uh, to go. Dave, um, and I, I really do. We've been monitoring the conditions here downtown. So at this point, folks, those we here at KSN are moving to our shelters. We are moving to our shelters. Scary moments for this TV station in Wichita, Kansas. KSNW right in the middle of their newscast. Everyone forced to leave and take shelter all because of this. At least one person is dead and around a dozen others hurt after a string of tornadoes ripped through Iowa, Kansas, Oklahoma, Illinois, and Missouri. The severe storms tossed tractor trailers like tin cans and turned homes inside out. Brent, get back here. We got to go soon. One after another. The twisters touched down, turning debris as they went. The National Weather Service says there are more than two dozen tornado reports from Oklahoma to Iowa. Oklahoma and Kansas were hit the hardest. A chopper pilot for CNN affiliate KFOR describes what he saw as he flew over the path of the storm. Everything was just... Um it was just gone. I mean, you see like beds in the yard. Like you took the house, you put it in a gigantic blender, you turned it on pulse for a couple minutes, mm -hmm. and then you just dumped it out. Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon declared a state of emergency for 16 counties in her state. Authorities say now they're searching for the injured. Right now, we're uh, our crews are out doing an initial damage assessment, uh, trying to see if anybody's out hurt, um, what kind of structures we have damaged. So if you haven't taken precautions up until this point, in Kansas, the storm brought hail, high winds, and tornadoes. This man says many homes in his neighborhood were hit, but he's come to expect this. I know my neighbor sustained a lot worse than I did, and my other neighbor over there looks like she's in worse shape. I haven't been over there yet. But, uh, you know, when you live in Kansas, that's just one of those things that's going to happen. Yeah, uh, my brother actually lives in Wichita, and it was a mile from his house, so he spent the day in the basement. Much of the same area could be under the gun today with a bullseye right on parts of Oklahoma and Missouri.
All right, happening today, if you're looking for work, there's a big job fair happening. It's the Greater Phoenix Job Fair, and nearly 1,000 companies are looking to hire for jobs right here in the Valley. Everything from business to education, health care. The event goes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Phoenix Airport Marriott. This is off of 44th Street near the Loop 202. Massage Envy Spa Arizona will also be hosting a job fair this week. 36 local Massage Envy stores are looking to hire 100 people tomorrow. That event is going to take place at ASU Sky Song in Scottsdale. Positions available include therapist, esthetician, front desk staff, and managers. The fair is going to run from 11 to 3 p.m. And when flying on a plane, would you rather sit next to a crying baby or... A smelly adult. <laughs> that's a tough one. A new poll says that most of us would rather deal with a noisy baby. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm thinking. That's just one of the findings of a survey that took a look at how flyers feel about certain perks and annoyances when traveling. And one of the top annoyances, carry baggage fees. Yeah. Uh, carry on. Uh, yeah. And then the poll also found that many would give up personal space just to rid themselves of that fee. However, 58% say they would be willing to pay extra for more leg room on flights of three hours or more. That's for sure. That would be nice. Hate to be cramped. Yes. All right. How one NBA star made one high school teen's wish come true. And a duel in the desert hits the diamond. Who came out on top, ASU or U of A? <laughs> All right, we've got a live look outside this morning. Beautiful morning, 76 degrees, calm winds. That's going to change later today. We're forecasting some windy weather. I'll show you what I'm tracking coming up. JT for your Monday morning at 642. A live look at the Loop 101 and Ray Road in Chandler. We're moving into the rush hour. You can see the slowing here on the northbound side. It's a little early to see the slowing. Usually it doesn't uh, ramp up until 7 o'clock. So if this is your part of town, just know you're going to see slowing here. The rest of the East Valley, pretty quiet still. I do want to mention to you, though, that the Chandler School District's on a year-round schedule. They actually don't get out of school until next week. So you'll see, still see uh, uh, some considerable congestion here. But the rest of the East Valley uh, School Districts, Mesa, Gilbert, Tempe, all get out this this week. All right, on the west side of town, I-10 eastbound at 75th Avenue, you can see that accident. It's not blocking anything, but it's causing a curiosity factor, slowing back to 91st Avenue. I-17 is moving into its rush hour. You get your break right around Glendale. If we move the maps up, you can see your slowing starts. Let's call that Thunderbird. 101 eastbound, though, has not moved into the rush hour. You know, April, after this week, I was talking about the school districts earlier, mm -hmm. uh, the patterns are going to change. In this part of town, everyone pretty much is out mm -hmm. after this week, including uh, Paradise Valley, Scottsdale, Deer Valley, Cave Creek, all of the big school districts, even Peoria, they'll yeah. all be out after this week. You know, and I used to get so excited about the start of summer before I was a parent. <laughs> I'm with you I'm on like, that, Mom. what am I going to do for three months? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So for many of you are sending your kids out the door this morning for one of the last times, uh, one of the last Mondays this school year anyway. Let's go ahead and take a look at your bus stop forecast this morning. What we're looking at this morning are, are fairly nice temperatures out there this morning. Uh, we're not quite cool, but I would say called a mild morning, mid 60s uh, to mid 70s with clear skies and very light winds for now. Again, we're expecting those winds to really start picking up uh, probably in the next couple of hours, but more likely at lunchtime into the afternoon hours. We're going to see our stronger winds out of the west. We don't have any watches are warning so they're not that strong but we're calling for breezy to locally windy conditions uh, this morning across the southwest all is calm but what we're looking at here is this system here passing by to our north is dragging behind it a cold front a dry cold front for arizona unfortunately because we're really starting to fall behind on our rainfall totals this is one of our drier months of the year so though so uh, not a total surprise as that cold front pushes through today that's what's going to drive those stronger westerly winds look for some gusts this afternoon here in the valley of up to 30 miles an hour with some stronger winds this morning beginning to develop already uh, in that lower Colorado River of western Arizona. High pressure is behind this. It's going to warm us up over the next couple of days after that front moves through. Unfortunately, all of that energy, that low pressure system is continuing to fuel storms across parts of the Plain States and that Midwest today. Uh, this morning, uh, Missouri seeing some of that and Kansas as well. Really just portions of eastern Kansas. We don't have any tornado watches or warnings out this morning. However, they do have some issues with flash flooding uh, warnings uh, uh, in uh, uh, reference to that. Uh, 
Uh, today, under the gun, Oklahoma stretching up into Missouri, parts of Arkansas. Uh, that area there, probably going to see the storms develop again later today. Some of the same areas impacted, unfortunately, by those strong weekend storms. For Arizona, we're going to see clear skies along with those winds today across the state. Uh, the winds again picking up later today, and your future cast shows lots of sunshine today. Really, the only chance for showers with this is going to be in the high country, and it's a very slim chance of some very light rain in places from the Kaibab Plateau over toward Reservation Country. Now, as we get into tomorrow, we'll start off the morning with clear skies throughout the day that we're going to see some high clouds moving from time to time. Still going to call for a mostly sunny Tuesday and a completely sunny Wednesday. As we get into Wednesday, that's when the uh, peak of our temperatures is going to be. We're forecasting triple digits for your Wednesday today. 97 95 is average for this time of year, so just barely above that tonight. Clear skies and outlying areas will get down to the low 60s closer in town about 70 sunrise tomorrow. Uh, 524 tomorrow uh, sun uh, 99 degrees for your afternoon high, mostly sunny skies. Your seven day forecast shows just that one day of triple digits. We can make it through this week 101 for Wednesday. Then temperatures start to fall. They'll stay in the uh, mid to upper 90s by next weekend. Sounds good, April. Thank you. Diamondbacks head to Coors Field tonight to start a three game set against the Rockies. But first, they were trying to extend their five game winning streak, taking on the Marlins. So let's head to South Beach. Bottom of the six, runners on the corners. And Miami's Marcel Ozuna takes this one all the way to the wall out there. Two run double, two nothing Marlins. Then Ricky Nolasco was sharp for the Marlins. Top of the eighth, two outs. And he gets. Gerardo Parra for the inning ending strikeout. He had 11 strikeouts on the day, bottom of the eighth. And check this out, a little pop up. Oh, yes, the ball pops off of Miguel Montero's mid, and Cole Mentor bats the ball in the air and grabs it. What a fantastic out. Diamondbacks with a chance in the ninth, two outs, down by just one run. Bases loaded for A.J. Pollock, and yes, he gets a hold of it, but no, thrown out over at first, and there is your game. Final score, 2-1 Marlins. Marlins snap a season-high seven-game losing streak. How about a little college baseball, ASU versus U of A in the rubber match of their three-game set. Senior Max Rossiter with an RBI single, and that scores Michael Benjamin. Devils have the lead at 4-2 after three innings of work. Several lead changes in this one, but U of A had the lead when it mattered the most, taking the game and the series, winning 7-6. Meanwhile, ASU softball looking to sweep the Tempe Regionals, taking on Georgia. And with Dallas Escobedo on the mound, boy, you got to like the Devils' chances. The freshman catcher, Amber Freeman, starts the scoring off for the Devils with a nice little floater there. ASU taking the lead, 1-0. And then Alex Johnson comes around to score. Still in the first, Haley Steele is able to add on to the lead. She sends a double down the line. ASU up 2-0 after that. Dallas shuts it down. Devils win it 2-zip. And so they will host the Super Regionals. And the conference finals underway in the NBA playoffs. Spurs taking on the Grizzlies for the Western Conference title. And it's the first time Memphis has made it thus far in the playoffs. Spurs, well, they've been here a bunch of times. And it definitely showed on the court. Tony Parker with a steal. And here he comes. Fast break. No problem. And that would extend San Antonio's lead later. Tim Duncan, the big guy, top of the key. And yes, got it. Spurs dominate the whole game, winning by 22. Game two tomorrow night. Meanwhile, in the East, the Heat and Pacers will get it underway on Wednesday for game one. And speaking of the Heat, one Heat star gives the South Florida teen a prom night she will never forget. It all started with Nicole Nucho. Well, she made a YouTube video last month asking star player Dwayne Wade to be her date at her high school prom. But because she says she's his, she's his biggest fan, she says, well, he never responded to her online request. So she ended up getting another date. But you see this? He saw the video. He decided to surprise her anyway. He showed up to the dance and look at this. I mean, she was definitely the talk of that night. That is excellent. The two <laughs> danced for a bit and he even met her family. Uh, Nicole and Wade both say it's a night they will always remember. What a cool prom. That's cool. That girl. D-Wade does a lot for the community. That's, that's a really neat. It's a great story. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. A creative way to recycle what some Valley kids did with hundreds of plastic bottles. And you have to stay tuned for this story. The huge tip 
That one waitress uh, got at work. This is an excellent story. Oh, man, I think we just gave it away. And you're looking at a shot of North Mountain on this Monday morning. It is going to be a wonderful day. How will you make it great? It's 6.50. We'll be right back. And good morning to you. Don't come much cuter than that. No, that's the cutest little thing I've seen. Here's something you don't see every day. As if it wasn't impressive enough to capture a picture of a meteor, one person was able to snap this one as it streaked across the sky above a volcano. Well, that is Mount Bromo, you see in the distance there, one of a handful of Indonesia's active volcanoes. It's a pretty cool picture. And normally you'd, normally uh, there'd be trash, but instead some water bottles help people float on the Tempe Town Yeah, Bay. this is a really great story. With a little bit of glue and 150 bottles, kids put their building skills to the test to make their own canoe at the wow. Tempe Public Library on Saturday. The idea was to raise awareness on recycling and promote a special water bottle drive to help homeless people. It's so dangerous for them in the summertime when it gets hot. This will provide them with water that they can take with them wherever they go. So it's recycling, it's STEM, it's doing good for the homeless. It's a fun project. Oh, I want to see that creative. thing float. Yeah. Uh, you can donate water at the Tempe Public Library starting on May 30th. As a little incentive, you'll be entered to win some prizes as well. I want to see the finished product. All right, you know, they always say it pays to be nice. And it's so true. That saying certainly rang true for one friendly waitress in Indiana who received a whopper of a tip. Well, it was just another day on the job for this waitress. Her name is Cece Bruce. It turned into something amazing when one of her regulars, do you see that? $446 tip. The total sale looks like it was only five bucks. At first, she thought it was $46, and she hesitated at that, but when she realized it was almost 10 times more, well, she tried to refuse it altogether. Listen. At first, I thought it was $46, and I said, wow, Miss Joe, you know, that's really generous. I didn't think I was worth $400, but, <laughs> you know, apparently she feels that I am. Wow, sure yeah. she is. Look at that. Five ninety seven, Scotty, for her for the hot dog or the hamburger they got there. Wow, that's that's nice. She probably deserved it. She looks like a nice lady. Cece's a part time student and she plans to use all that money on her bills. Yeah, apparently one of the other tables was kind of being hard on oh. her, and she kept smiling and kept smiling. And that's they the recognize ticket, that. Yeah. For sure. Hey, next, the manhunt continues for the driver responsible for hitting and killing a Phoenix police officer a little more than 24 hours ago. Plus, for nearly two decades, they've been talking about building the South Mountain Freeway. Well, tomorrow, hundreds are expected to speak out about not building it. It's 656.